Welcome to the March SOF pod. Um, we're going to start with a poem. And I've dived into the book of Donna Ashworth again, Wild Hope. So settle in. So we read a poem, for those of you who have not been with us before. Poem, couple of minutes of silence. And the reason for that is just to allow us all to arrive, be present with one another, let go whatever has been going on before you came into this space. So if you want to close your eyes, feel free to. If you want to turn your camera off, feel free to. Look out a window, whatever works best for you. And this poem is called Right at the Top. It bothers me when people say mental health is just as important as physical health. Because no, it's not. It's more important. Your brain, your mind, your computer runs the entire show. Quite literally nothing. Nothing in your body works without your mind. If it is not constantly maintained, understood and managed, it will bring everything else to its knees everything. I'm pleased the world is finally waking up to the importance of mental health, but let's prioritise it properly, finally, right at the top, where it belongs. Just take time now, close your eyes, take the deepest breath that you've taken all today, and enjoy the next 90 seconds of silence. As you come back into the room, take the deepest breath you've taken all of today. Maybe have a wiggle and a stretch in your chair. Come back in the room with everybody else. Awesome. So good to see you all. Welcome to March. So, did you know, in 1752, the 1st of March would have been the beginning of a new year. And it was only after 1952 that the uh, 1752 1752 that the UK changed um, when their new year was. So I thought that was really interesting. So March is the start of the new year, if you so wish to to go with that way of uh, thinking. Um, it's also known as the month of the wind by the farmers. And again, in the UK, uh, definitely, definitely windy today. And it carries on by the looks of things. Um, also, any Welsh in the room today? Rhiannon, I know you're there. Uh, happy St. David's Day. It is the 1st of um, March, and that's uh, St. David's Day to the Welsh. So Happy New Year. Happy, happy St. David's Day. And the word of the month at SOF is nurture. So today we're going to be talking about nurture and what that means to us. Um, I just want to do a quick check in. I see some new faces in the room. Who Who is discovering the 
the pod for the first time who's popping in and saying hi. Hey, Julian. Hey, Marco. Welcome. Um, so the way it sort of flows around here is everybody starts chatting in the chat box. You're welcome to put your voices in the room where, where there is an appropriate moment to do so. Um, yeah, we're working with facilitators and trainers. So this is definitely not a one way traffic kind of hour. So definitely invite conversation and connection here. But today I'm joined by Fiona McBride. Hey, Fee, how are you? Hello, hello. Hello. Good morning. Good. So Fiona is going to be our guest and she's going to be talking to us today about well-being and a reflective practice. So Fiona, how do you and I know each other? I often ask this question of everybody. Mm. So this is not great because I have the worst memory in the world. However, I have a memory of being at Learning Technologies Conference in London and meeting yeah. you through a mutual friend of ours, Julie. And then I think but, it's just social media stalking. I was about to say, but before that, Twitter. When yeah. Twitter was nice, let's not go I don't do Twitter anymore. It's just too, yeah. it's too emotionally draining over there. I don't know about everybody. Oh, X, apologies. Um, so we're going to talk about reflective practice and um, in particular for ourselves today. Um, Fee, shall I start with a poll just to see what people are, are saying about their own reflective practice? We've got a poll for you. I made a poll and now I can't see it. Well, there it is. So this is an invitation for you to, to answer this question. Who actively builds a reflective practice into their work? Yes, no, unsure, tell me more. And then the chat about Twitter, like Nick's going, don't call it that, it's ridiculous, X. And yeah, I'm deactivating as well, I have to say, Claire. Okay, has everyone had an opportunity to vote? A few more. This is your last call to action. Forever hold your peace. Okay. So you should be able to see the results coming up on your screen right now. Um, okay. 59% say yes, Fiona. 21% of us are saying no. And 21% are unsure. Tell me more. So, me, what? What is this? What are we talking about today? What does it mean to you? What is a reflective practice? Yeah, and I'm really very aware that this is my view, right? So I'm really, <laughs> that's why I love that you invited me into this kind of space that you hold here because you said it's about conversation. So I'd love to hear like the different perspectives. Um, I've done a fair bit of reading around it and uh, there's so much out there, so much useful discussion and kind of dialogue and frameworks and models and things. But where I'm at with it is that I feel like it's a deliberately active process. So it is a thing that I do. Mm -hmm. uh, we're reflective as human beings, but as a facilitator and as a yoga teacher and a kind of learning person, um, it's one of thoughtfully considered action for me. Does okay. that make sense as a- yeah um because i think when i am quite proactive with it or build it into design and, and all other elements of my work it really helps me to gain insight so it's that opportunity to slow down to pause and to notice mm -hmm. and can you because if some people are still sitting there going i'm not too sure what you're meaning by a reflective practice could you give some examples of what reflective practice means for you and if anyone wants to drop in the chat as well what reflective practice means for them let's start the chat there so sometimes it literally is taking a pause and going what just happened not in a dramatic <laughs> way <laughs> but I might be with a group or supporting an individual and it's me going right I've done a bit of a thing just hang on check in with myself for myself but also for the other person because I'm conscious we can talk about this in two ways right we can talk about reflective practice for our own practice 
but also reflective practice in supporting others. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that I might cross, a, I might jump a bit, but hopefully that will make sense. Yeah. Um, it might be really scheduled and planned and I might have questions that I'll be asking myself during or after doing a piece of work or engaging with somebody. Okay. Yeah. And there's numerous models and frameworks out there that I find really useful. And I've got one that I'll share later mm -hmm. and we'll actually have a go at doing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then sometimes it's engaging other people to help me reflect. So having those trusted spaces, trusted people you can go to to help you think about how you're doing, what you're doing, the impact you're having, maybe like how you might be getting in the way of yourself or in the way for others. So yeah. it's, because it's about that building those levels of self-awareness. Does that mm. does that help? Does that um, if yeah, asking looking, the looking around the, the metaphorical room here for some yeah. cues. I'm saying nods, but I don't like to make assumptions. So <laughs> they're, they're pretty responsive, Fiona. They'll tell you if they don't get it. Someone will immediately pipe up. Absolutely for sure. Um, so there's some comments in the chat box. So Matt saying, you know, I first encountered and understood a reflective practice uh, in my work as a coach and found it really useful and that it's built into other areas of my life. Um, Margaret, uh, I, yeah, feeling into myself, noticing if there's a disturbance, walking and thinking, journaling, talking something over. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, fee, another fee. I put a slot in my diary to do a, a reflective practice following if I've had two days out with humans in a room. Yeah. And probably we should all do that now that we're back in the room more and picking up the energy of the group, building in time, whether that's, even just getting outside for a walk and shaking off the energy or if you are even a yoga practice is another piece for me that I use as a, a moving reflection. I'm skiing next week. That will be a ton load of reflection. If anyone skis, sitting on a chairlift for sure. <laughs> um, a really lovely quote that um, I often share when I talk about reflective practice and when I talk about pausing in okay. our work as learning professionals. And it's Mark Twain, and it says, the right word may be effective, but no word was ever as effective as a rightly timed pause. Well, who so said again, that? So this is Mark Twain. The right word may be effective, but no word was ever as effective as a rightly timed pause. Mm. And I read that years ago, and it really stuck with me. And it's one that I do share. And I often share it when I'm coaching others or mentoring and when I'm facilitating in the room because there's something I think in all of this about permission and what's normal and what's not normal um because I don't know about everybody else but there's something about the pace of the world of work and the pace of life that we don't seem to have this natural I don't know, we just don't seem to have a default or slowing down default, do we? It just, everything keeps moving forward quickly. Mm -hmm. And we do a thing and then we go on to the next thing. <laughs> oh, Nick, thank you for capturing that and putting it in the, the chat. Yeah, we do. And um, I am as guilty on the, the, do something, just carry on, don't actually stop, think, what, or even feel into what's just happened and, how epic it was or why was I triggered? I take some of it into therapy and I definitely take some into conversation with friends, but not, it's more ad hoc for than that deliberate piece. Mm. Um, um, so why is it beneficial? Just to get real clear. To get, to get super clear. Some people have started sharing it already in the chat, which is amazing. I think for me, there's been something about my own energy you know, so mm. noticing energy and effort yep. helps to tap into that and check and, and check that I'm putting, you know, myself in, in the right space in the right way and therefore doing my work well. So yes. as a coach or as a facilitator, learning professional, um, so it really helps you embrace self-awareness. Yeah, um, I was about to say, what's the benefit to the client of us doing this work? Yeah, and so then there's the piece around continuous improvement and adaptability and being agile. And I do think it's that professional, personal growth piece. Definitely um, doing the work. 
Yeah. Um, because if we're there to support others and to help others be awesome and eff efficient and effective or whatever the word is <laughs> that, we're, that we're doing, then we have to do our own work too, right? And we put on the uh, description for this session, you know, that piece around putting your own oxygen mask on first before helping others. And I do, that's truly one of my very deep values. Mm. I'm not saying we have to be perfect, but we have to have gone some way to being self-aware and knowing and, and learning ourselves, right? And yeah, and I, and one of my um, noticings is, especially in the world of facilitation and training, there is there is no official like accreditation, and that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. But there is little encouragement to do your work. There's little encouragement to have a supervisor or a coach. Whereas if you are in the coaching space or counselling or therapy, you know there's expectation that you have a supervisor, that you have a coach, that you do your own inner work. And yet, you'll all know this, listening, watching, think of all those people that you work with every week, every month, and the energy that they're that you're giving them and they're giving you. Um, I've had facilitators say to me, especially when they're in big grief, that they can't do the work, they can't do the facilitation, they can't do their job because just everything's coming up and out and we can't be in that space for others. I don't think it's fair. Um, so I think doing this kind of inner work is so important. And if this practice fee that we're about to do is part of our toolkits, because it's a toolkit, it's not just one thing fits all. Um, I think this is going to be really beneficial for us to, yeah. to start to weave in. Can I just, Jamie has written into the chat. A teacher once said to me, a rolling stone never gathers any moss. Yeah. Sure you're stopping once in a in a while. I'm not sure if there, oh, I missed it. Yeah. And and there's something in that, isn't there, which intrigues me. Because moss is so important to the ecosystem. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, so all this like slowing down. There's so many elements of our lives and work that we miss, or we miss connections, or we miss um just kind of uh being curious you know it's a natural human trait to be curious and it helps us make connection and and build awareness and understanding yeah. so if we're not kind of having those opportunities and somebody i noticed in the chat had said i'm i uh struggle to pause i think well i'm not sorry i'm not good at doing the pause thing nick said that and i totally get it and so whenever i've whenever i speak about this with facilitators or in sessions i'm not going to be super dramatic and say let's have half an hour of silence because for a lot of people that is tough right but what if we did one minute what if every day for one minute for all of next week you reflected for one minute or just slow down mm. for one minute? that's five minutes of a week right and then you can build that up over time if it's bad if you're finding value yeah. and, and people typically the trend goes that way they start to see the value and they don't and it doesn't get it's not as uncomfortable Nice. Different. Do you know? Do you know? Yeah. No. Absolutely. It's like the same with the meditation practice. It's the same with any practice. Like start small and then it becomes normal and then it becomes easier and it's like you build the muscle. Mm -hmm. Um. Should we? Should we do it? See. Should yeah. we have a reflective practice? Shall we? That'll Shall we? <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's many different models and frameworks approaches um out there and some of you already are saying you're aware of some. I'm going to introduce a quite a simple one. It has three questions um, and it's um, a model by Rolf. So I'll put it into the chat in a moment. Um, but it asks three things. It's got three steps. So maybe just for a minute, um, decide right now what would be helpful reflection for you. Do you want to think about the week that's gone so far? Or maybe do you want to think about a piece of work or a project You've been working on so have a thing that maybe you think would be useful to reflect on so hopefully something pops into your mind it doesn't have to be big <laughs> um and then these three questions so we say we ask what and then we ask so what and then we ask now what so what has been your experience of this so far what happened yeah, so you, and there's many prompting questions under the what that we could use, but they're just a couple. And then the next stage, so we'll spend some time on that. 
and you can you can reflect by looking out the window closing your eyes or you can write things down it's really up to you how you do this um we'll spend a few minutes on each of the three but you could obviously in your own time spend a lot longer or less <laughs> so then we'll ask so what so having thought about the what what's gone before what's the experience been then think so what what does this mean what's the impact of this for me for them or whatever the context is you're choosing to reflect on and then the third element is now what so we start to shift into action or maybe not but it's it's not just going oh a thing happened and then we let let it go we we say what learnings what possibilities are there from that because of maybe any new insight we've had or because we've had this small opportunity to slow down what does that mean now for me going forward and for some things it might mean nothing but the practice of the reflection means we know that you, you see what i mean yeah so those are the three elements what so what now what beautiful and you're going to lead us through each of those stages and give people time to to reflect and to think yeah so hopefully that's given everyone enough time to think of a thing to reflect on and it could just be your week right so you could just this could be a really nice opportunity to go I haven't actually stopped and thought about the week that's just gone so it could be that yeah and sometimes starting with something super simple rather than super big can be yeah. really helpful because yeah, you can just play it. with the the model and allow your your brain just to to get used to it yeah so let's have i'm going to keep time we'll have a couple of minutes for each of the three if you started already carry on <laughs> but let's just have that silence then now for a couple of minutes and think about the what so what has just happened? What has been your experience so far? And if you want to go off camera, of course, turn your camera off and have your own space, then please do. Okay, 
So if you're ready to, and you might have just gone straight into the so what for yourself already, and that's fine, of course. But now would be a good time, just timing wise, to give you a chance to try all three. Now to shift into your so what thinking. So from your what part, thinking so what. So what does this mean? What's the impact on you, on others? What's the impact on your work or your practice? Okay, so a couple of minutes on that one. And then we'll move into the third part, so the now what. So thinking, action, change, a shift, if that's appropriate for the context of this reflective practice for you. What possibilities are there now because of new insight? What possibilities are there for those you're supporting if you're doing this in the context of supporting others? So a couple of minutes on now what?
Okay, so maybe just have a few seconds to wrap up any little thoughts. Or of course, if you're on a roll, just feel free to completely ignore me and do what you need to do. <laughs> That'd not be me if I said, everyone put your pants down. <laughs> Okay, I wonder how that felt. I'd be really keen to hear in the chat or or, or speaking. I know Percy said everyone can speak. Um, mm -hmm. Be just reflections on reflection. <laughs> Nick, go for it. Hi. So I know why I said yeah, I said earlier about I'm not good at the pause thing. It's just. An avoidance of actually dealing with what's going on um which i know about because i'm dealing with that with my coach and my therapist well just realized my microphone's quite far there we go um but um yeah it was good to actually stop and go i want a career in acting and i've not been taking any action around that and the what the so what do you want to know the what, so what, and what now? Just, just really to your observation, Nick, because yeah, I'm otherwise going to have a... Okay, yeah, <laughs> it, was just, it, was really, it was really good to stop and, and consider it and actually confront those feelings. Mm, thank you for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Who else? Amanda shared in the chat that it felt really good, useful to reflect on something that happened earlier this week. I wouldn't have done it otherwise. Thanks, yeah. Amanda, for sharing that. I think that's the thing as well, isn't it, about if we give ourselves a little bit of space, it can be interesting what comes up. So we can be really specific. And like somebody shared in the chat earlier, you know, have it in the diary, you know, build it into our design methodology or whatever our, you know, whatever our planning is, if we like to plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. But actually, sometimes just those little pauses can just be enough. Yeah. To bring things to mind absolutely so what we thought we'd do is go into pairs that's all right with you Fee. we're going to go into a breakout room um we're gonna get let's i always want a good decent amount of time so we're going to do 10 minutes so you can have a good old chat with someone i've suddenly realized you know when um you do breakout rooms where people have got their online ai recorders they also get put into rooms so i've just been shifting a few of those out so you're with someone you might know or might not know. Say hello. How are you? Where are you? Make some connections. Um, some people have just left. So let me just move people around. Otherwise, Callan and Rhiannon, you're sitting in a room on your own. And that is genuinely not fun. OK, uh, invitations are now there. So feel free to open and head in. It would be lovely. Fiona and I were just talking about this. We are curious, what have you been noticing in the last half hour about reflective practice, you, the doing of it? Yeah, it'd be good to hear some, some voices and also in the chat. So if you use your, the hand up, that would be brilliant. Or just put it in the chat. You want more time to reflect if you're alone. Yeah. Oh, Marco, that was before you went off. Uh, super valuable. Um, oh, Rhiannon is there. Go for it, Rhiannon. Hello. Sure. I um, just had such a wonderful conversation with Callan and I'm just trying to find her on my screen somewhere and there's too many people in one go. <laughs> um, one of the things that we that, that came up for us was the power of writing it down and how writing it down changed it from a conversation with ourselves internally, which invariably we both said was quite critical. And then we wrote it down and suddenly we were far more, it took it out of our head we were almost a bit more rational with it, but then at the same time, we were able to dive deeper and to notice something. So on the one hand, we became rational, but then we became more, more creative and more free thinking. 
so there was something there about writing it down that really made a difference for us lovely yeah I'm I'm in that school of thought as well Rianne and sort of getting things out of my head and the old pen to paper or if you're all in the remarkable gang the remarkable pen to paper moment uh thanks Rianne and hey Marco nice to meet you Hey, likewise. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I also had a very lovely chat with Margaret, and it's always interesting how, yeah, like it's always good to trust that the person you're putting is the right person because indeed with Annette, what can you find in the connection and in the sharing? And then I think I'm going to extract a little bit, but we brought it again to the body level, like thinking about things is important and how can you process also really like in a body level maybe you've seen me putting things in the chat and letting things go letting things move you know like through your body as well you know instead of just thinking and yeah we connected nicely about the way we approach these things and movement and stillness and struggles and possibilities so thanks margaret absolutely and having Oh my God, you with Margaret. Oh, you two would have had a great wacky conversation. Totally get that one. Um, meant to be the Zoom gods, as Fiona's saying. Um, I saw me. earlier in the chat from Jason um, doing it from a head, heart, gut perspective, the questions. Um, and Marco, to your point, is allowing just not the thoughts to come up, but like, what is my body telling, telling you? Like, what am I feeling? Like, what sensations are coming through? Um, you don't have to analyze those sensations, but even just writing them down and noticing them. Is a... Firstly, I was going to add to to that. So what I've been taught to do is ask yourself a specific question and it has to be the, exactly the same question. And you, you ask the question to your head, which is the rational part of your brain. Then you ask the the heart the same question, but I'd like to do it when I have my eyes closed so you can really focus in on those areas. And the heart is the emotional part of uh, the, 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 the question and then the gut feel. But the, the, the answers should be three different ones. And the one that you feel most comfortable with is the one that you should be going with. Lovely. Thanks, Jason. You're welcome. Ah. Someone else, what, what did you notice going through that practice? I find it interesting um, if I could just share. Um, so a lot of people will sometimes say to me, so that's not very good English, is it? <laughs> Many people have said they worry about finding the right answer or where where is the practice meant to go. Hmm. So something that we don't have, I'd love it if we had a whole other hour to talk about this as a topic because I find it so interesting. But I think there's something in that, isn't it, about just allowing it to go where it goes and then almost come back to reflect on it <laughs> again. <Yeah. laughs> so it can be like a continual process. And then quite like Marco said about not just being up in the head, but an embodied practice is so key. I mean, I don't know if I said it at the start, but I teach yoga. And so there's a lot in my learning about embodied practice and being aware of the body and how it responds um, yeah. in situations. And so there's data, isn't there? We have data points from many different places which are worth paying attention to. Definitely. And, and trusting ourselves that the heart and the gut is as informative and maybe right uh, and versus our, our heads. But we get taught about our heads a lot because that's where the emphasis is placed when it comes to the world of work and the world of school. Hey, Julian, welcome. Hello. hello. Uh, good Hi. to be here. I'm just going to tie in here. And I see Lorna already put it in chat. So we had a wonderful wonderful chat also where, where this idea of gut feelings came out of uh, came up a lot and how do we make sure we you know take a moment to pause and listen to our gut feelings and situations where sometimes maybe we want to push past it but most of the times really when we really take a pause and go with our gut that that's usually the right way or the right thing to do and for me personally I find like there's something magical as well about writing and free flow writing that helps me access my gut feeling in a way that I maybe wouldn't if I'm just trying to think about it. Yeah, I hear you. So, um, as ever, I'm really conscious of time, sadly, and we've got five minutes left. I, I just wanted to ask you, Fiona, 
um where what, what what what's your suggestion as a next step for so people who are suddenly going oh this is this is useful like i i I've, I've taken something from this short exercise this morning and what what do what can i do next i think um is keep trying and and I, I said earlier about it could just be one minute at the end of every day if it feels like it's something you feel drawn to that you want to try and you've already found some value or can see some value in it then think about how you can build it in yeah or where so and it could just be and not to put lots of pressure on so it could be one minute at the end of every day or it could be five minutes at the end of the week or um and then think about where quite naturally you feel drawn to like the way you do it so is it walking and thinking is it writing all the beautiful things everyone said about writing already um i'm a massive fan of um free writing um as julian said so it's like that just let the pen go where it needs to go and see yeah it comes out um or is it sitting with someone else because you know you want to have a reflective practice but you're still trying to find your way with it so do you have somebody that you often will talk with or talk things through with nice um and even just using that model there's many other models out there some quite chunky and some that kind of quick step through so start start somewhere i suppose i don't know if that's too vague as a <laughs> no and, and people are writing in the chat as well fiona so um some people do the julia cameron's morning pages as a tool oh. matt shared a couple of books you know creating the reflective habit by michelle lucas and a leader's guide to reflective practice by Judy Brown. Um, ooh, another one. I uh, Call of the Wild by Kimberly Ann Johnson about embodiment. I I think the 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 invite is though is to start. Yeah. Because if you don't start, like even have a go. Now, if you are the sort of person that it works best to put some time in your diary officially, you know, like diarize it, then do that. If you are more organic and you know that works for you, like what would it be like to say, you know, next Friday morning, I'm going to take that five minutes for myself to reflect on the week and um, to play with that. And maybe just have one question. So give yourself one question. So again, if it feels massive, just have a, you know, how was that? Or how yeah. am I? Or just a starting question to begin exactly. that process. So, um, Fiona, thank you for being our guest today. You are uh, amazing. How do people find you? Like, where can they follow you? Um, so, LinkedIn, <laughs> um, as you probably expect. So, Fiona McBride on LinkedIn. Um, and then if you Google Fiona McBride or Fiona McBride Yoga, you'd find my websites as well. And, and you do I your yoga online? I do my yoga online and in person in Sussex. Um, yep. And I'd love to continue talking about this. So if anyone just wants to natter about it, like just give me a shout because I'm really passionate about it. So. Mm. Well, um, I was going to say to everybody on here, and I've just put a link in the the chat. We have got um, a gathering in London on the 22nd of March. Um, and if you are, if people are free, maybe we can weave an element of this practice into that time because we co-create the agenda together at the gatherings. So the next gathering is the 22nd of March. It's in London. It's uh, 9.30 to 3 o'clock. Um, there's often a theme. I'm just trying to get a, a guest um, lined up and sorted it around the theme of comedy and using humour in um, facilitation. Um, I'm just chasing him. It's like trying to pin down a cat, which is really hard. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we do those practices together. So if people are free to come, come along and join us. There's currently six of us. I, I'm going to be really transparent as I always am to make it work that I am not paying for the delight of everyone spending time with me. I need 10 people in the room because the cost of hire in London for a room is ridiculous. So if people are around and they can come play, um, do this is that's more nurture time for you is how I see coming into the gathering so if you're UK based though we have got someone flying in from Germany which I'm really bloody excited about um Patrick Cowden who some of you may know because he's done stuff on here with us before I can see Suzanne Heiss in the corner going oh Patrick I know he's coming to hang out um but it'd be lovely to see you oh Margaret yeah I already pay 100 pounds an hour 
and it's still just it's just cost it's crazy um thank you everybody for being here today if you want to re-watch this um this episode of the SOF pod will go up onto YouTube probably later next week. So you can watch it back and follow the practice again with Fiona. Um, if you want to stay for the after party, Fiona and I are going to hang out for another 15 minutes in the metaphorical kitchen where the best chats are. So feel free to stay on. Otherwise, go well. Um, I'll see you in April. April, we'll talk about websites and copywriting. The joy of... So come along then. Otherwise, have a good March, team. And yay to the clocks changing at the end of the month. See you soon. Mm -hmm.